I was reading a little book here not long ago that on some kind of a, a research. And in this research, I found something most startling. I sat down and I laid the book down and raised up my hands and praised God. Got up and walked around a little bit and sat down and read it again. I thought, oh, is that so? That on this same hill where Jesus was crucified, Adam died and was buried. On the same hill that Jesus died on and was buried on the same hill where Adam died. He died at, on Golgotha and was buried on Golgotha. Now I thought, what appropriate, whether it was right or wrong. Let's say it was right. Then the first Adam died and was buried and there yet in the dust. Amen. Because he represented the world and the people to sin. But the second Adam, being the God of heaven, Amen. when he died on Golgotha, there wasn't Amen. enough earth to hold him there. Amen. He rose on the third Amen. day and is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. But the sin problem was settled. God settled the sin problem there at Calvary. That's where the debt was paid. When this Adam, second Adam, died, he paid the debt of sin for the human race. And the world put him in a tomb and sealed him up in that tomb. And they do the same today. They're trying to do the same today. I don't want you to miss this. The world is trying and will get worse all the time to seal Christ back in a tomb again. They're trying to make him a historical God. One that walked in days and gave power to disciples to heal the sick and to cast out devils. But what did they do as soon as they thought they had got rid of him, just like Cain did when he thought he got rid of Abel, they sealed him in a tomb and put him in there. And today they're trying to keep Christ in a tomb. But oh, what an Easter morning does. An Easter morning ruined all of their theology. I went to Easter morning, came for a people, a church here 1,900 years later. It Amen. ruined their theology. Praise the Lord. He's not dead. He's alive forevermore. They cannot keep him in no tomb. You can put him in a Methodist tomb or a Baptist tomb or a Presbyterian tomb or whatever you want to, but he raised out of that tomb and is alive today. I had a Baptist tomb, and you might have had a Methodist tomb. But one day, Jesus rose from there from a historical God to a living present God, alive forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Something taking place on that Easter morning. It was a seal of satisfied seal. When they took him and put him in the tomb and put a Roman seal up on top of it, but when that hour arose, Amen. when that hour come, he stayed there for a while, it's true. He stayed there for those three days and nights. But on that set time, which the scripture said, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. On the time when he said, destroy this body and on the third day I'll rise it up. Amen. And there's nothing can stop that scripture. It's got to come Amen. to pass. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And that seal was broken. Glory. And he rose up the same Jesus. Died again forevermore. Hallelujah. And for some 1,900 years, or maybe I'll say 14 or 1,500 years, the churches has had him sealed away. But he said, it shall come to pass in the last days. There's nothing more to stop you. There will be light in the evening time. The works that I do should you also... It shall be light in the evening time. Amen. I don't care how many seals you try to put over it. God will break every seal. Amen. All right. He broke the seal of the tomb. He broke the seal of hell. He broke the seal of death. He broke the seal of the grave. And arose forevermore. Child. Over the grave, death, hell, tombs, and every man-made thing there was to show that he was God. And cannot be sealed away from the people anymore. God forevermore. Nothing can hold him. 
The grave couldn't be dug deep enough. Hell couldn't be hot enough. Oh, nothing could hold him. He broke every seal with Easter seal that he was sealed with. And he said, the same seal that I wear, you shall wear also. For the, and this seal that I wear, it shall do the same thing when you're sealed. For he that believeth in me, the work that I do shall he do also. Even greater than this shall he do, for I go unto the Father. How do you go to keep it down? What are you going? What can people do about it? You might, you're forced to a decision to make your decision what to do about it. That's exactly right. Now, we find that he, no seal could hold him. He come forth. God broke the seal. The seal of the tomb broke the seal of death, broke the seal of hell, broke the seal of the grave, and came forth triumph. Amen. What did it? That great seal that was on the inside Amen. of him. They could destroy the body, but they could never destroy that seal. God gave the church a seal then that Amen. can never be destroyed. Amen. When it destroyed Abel, he raised up Seth. When it destroyed one prophet, they raised up another. They kept destroying. But God gave them something then that they cannot destroy. Amen. It's a supernatural spirit. Amen. It's a Holy Ghost itself. Amen. And it's infallible. Amen. And it's imperishable. Hallelujah. It cannot Hallelujah. be destroyed. Hallelujah. It'll live on and on and on. And because he lives, we live with him because Amen. we're sealed Amen. into the body Hallelujah. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory. Thank you. No way, no way to ever be destroyed. Cannot perish but has eternal life. Amen. Amen. God's great ripping of them seals. 